Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome back to our channel. We are Jason and Chrissy. We are Twin Flames and Harmonious from Play Union. And uh, we're going to continue to uh, unpack and explore our autism journey. And so something that um, I've been reading some, a couple different books, but something that really struck me as I've been, you know, I don't know, looking at different channels and different things on autism is that like, I, I would like to remind just everyone that autistic children become autistic adults. <laughs> and um, I think like there's, <laughs> there's, you don't say, you don't say they actually do become adults and they continue to develop over time. And so they'll, they'll continue to change and develop as their mind moves through the process of development. Right. And so what you'll experience in autistic children is not necessarily what uh, a autistic adult will present as it'll be different. And uh, in regards to services, there, there are astonishingly very little to no services for autistic adults, especially if you're going along the journey of identifying if you uh, are autistic. We've learned this over time and uh, having gone to um, like to see medical professionals on it and, and that we, we did another video on that. But like uh, I was reading about really truly choosing to advocate for yourself if you do go down the road of needing to get diagnosed or you desire to you know, speak to a specialist and, and I really highly recommend you seek an autistic specialist before you get started. Not everyone can diagnose you with uh, autism. And if you are an adult, you need to go to a specific specialist, an adult autism specialist, which is even more difficult to well, find. This is, a, this is if like you want a medical Correct. diagnosis. Correct, yeah, 100%. Like you want to be told by a medical professional that, yes, you're autistic or no, you're not autistic. It's not necessary for which, a lot of people. Uh, may not be yeah, necessary for a mm -hmm. lot of people. Um, because it's so difficult, it seems like, um, you know, if they catch it when, when you're a child, and I think that that's like, it's caught between, because it's like blatantly obvious, right? right. That, but if like you're, um, anywhere on the spectrum where, you know, you're, you can kind of mask certain things or you, uh, learn, uh, behaviors and you just like mimic those behaviors it could be very difficult to like be like oh well this this is a potential autistic child because um by all you know uh by all you know uh eye test type things uh they're they're doing all the th same things that like a, a neurotypical person would do uh and so once you kind of pass that threshold of child to uh teenager to adult like there's almost no uh, you know testing or verification for uh you know being being kind of diagnosed as an autistic person as an adult can be also very expensive and so what we found as we continue to explore this by um really doing a couple things we are talking to other people who are artistic we are researching on our own, like listening to other autistic people through blogs, through uh, online chats, through TED Talks, through YouTube. And then we're doing research uh, in regards to reading different uh, books on autism and uh, how it presents and the myths of surrounding it. And as we've done that and found some, some different, like, you know, just surveys and tests that you can take, it's con increasingly communicating that, you know, self-diagnosing as autism feels the best for us or au as autistic feels the best for us. And there's a lot of, and it's actually well-received in the autistic community that if you self-diagnose uh, with autism, you're embraced because of this struggle that currently exists with uh, receiving an official diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So that's something really interesting to me. And uh, I find that as I look back, even in my, you know, in high school years and like, I can see how I was really drawn to others that were potentially autistic. And, um, you know, I, it really does um, connect with me in a very meaningful way. I have always felt like, you know, I was, my mind would just worked differently and come to find out having done research, it is uh, proven scientifically that the mind is just wired differently. It's 
wired more in some areas. There's more connections in some areas of the brain with autistic people than others. And there's a lack of connection in some areas of the brain uh, than in areas that, you know, neurotypical people have, that what it, that's what it means, neurotypical, have uh, connections. And so that results in what presents as deficits or issues for the, the autistic ch child. But what I've experienced, you know, just reflecting and looking back at my life is what they're considering like concerns. I never actually considered a concern. It was just who I was. It's just how I, how I was and like who I am. And um, like uh, an example would be that like, you know, you're always off in your own little world. You know, I would get that a lot. Like you're off in your own little world. Like you don't answer when I call you like those kind of things. And um, I was, but I, that's where I really genuinely enjoyed to be because I felt safe there. And so like, I would be alone, like, uh, you know, playing with toys or dolls or just in my room uh, being and just being in a quiet room was uh, something that I often did. And uh, it's not, it wasn't, it was so much that it wasn't considered normal or like my uh, other sibling. And so it's just something to realize is that an autistic child needs some needs, needs are different, right? There is a lot of rest that's required, uh, a lot of time to process the day, especially if they're in school and things like that so that they can stay balanced. Hmm. And I, I guess it's just important to get, get clear on, you know, what, what kind of uh, diagnosis is, is best for you. If it's the self-diagnosis, um, that's generally the route that like, it doesn't matter what someone else thinks or what some, how someone else perceives you. If it's, if it's just for you, like you, you want to kind of know for you and you do the research in all the different ways. And then you're like, um, okay, I, you know, I noticed that behavior in me uh, throughout my childhood or throughout this, the, these periods of my life. I, I notice these certain things and that's why I can, it feels good to me to be like, okay, I, I'm, you know, I, I might be autistic, mm -hmm. right? You know, you don't get anything for it. You don't, <laughs> you don't get like extra points or anything uh, or, you know, sympathy, I guess, or, or anything. Yeah, and It's just I, like for you to, yeah. for, to understand yourself better. That's like the whole uh, reason for, um chasing this this down yeah. to whether or not you, whether you are or whether you aren't it's just like so you can understand yourself better you can understand how you operate uh how how, how things how you react to things uh your own feelings uh and, and and how to better just you know take care of yourself and um you know flourish uh, yeah relate with the world and relate yeah. with others it is a. Uh it's eye opening and it supports you in connecting with others when you desire connect to connect with them, which will be meaningful for everyone involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's all we have for this one. And uh, we'll see you next time. See ya. Bye-bye.